that will mean for students. And one Ball State professor is rediscovering his love for art. We'll tell you how next. And we're tracking scattered showers and cooler temperatures. We'll tell you how long both will last coming up. From Ball State Unified Media, this is NewsLink Indiana. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for being with us. I'm Tyler Brummett. And I'm Samantha Johnson. Our top story tonight, Ivy Tech has announced plans for a $30 million renovation of its downtown Muncie campus and a $13 million improvement plan for the Cowan Road location. The new downtown structure will house the culinary arts program as well as administrative offices and testing centers. The long-awaited expansion is expected to increase the number of students from 800 to 2,500. Ivy Tech is also making renovations to other area locations, including Marion and Anderson. The project is expected to begin next month and wrap up in January of 2020. Area high school students are getting the chance to show off some of their work in downtown Muncie. News League Indiana's Rachel Russell talked to a few Delta students about some of their projects. After three weeks of hard work, Caitlin Wade was surprised to hear that her hard work had paid off. Well, honestly, I was telling my boyfriend, I was like, let's just go. It's kind of pointless. You know, I'm not going to get first. And then they called my name and I started clapping. It's like I didn't realize it was me. And I sat there. And then once I realized it was me after my mom said something, I ran up and I was real happy. Caitlin's winning sculpture is a heart and lungs with the quote, follow your heart, but take your brain with you. A quote that her friend told her in middle school. Her and I have been friends forever and I just, I like it. And it just kind of reminds me of like our friendship, I guess, because like we were crazy. <laughs> For Claire George, a junior at Delta, her sculpture reminds her of her favorite music, Dave Matthews Band. It kind of looks like a meteor and kind of like, I don't know, like a headless ballerina all at once. <laughs> Yeah. The coordinator of the Young Artist Exhibit said Claire is the perfect example of this competition after winning an honorable mention last year and now third place this year. This competition is a good way for these young people to show off their passion. I've just always loved art ever since I was a kid. I've loved painting and drawing and when I saw there was a sculpture class I knew like I've not done that before so I wanted to kind of reach out and do that but I've always just been in love with art. Both of these young artists are already getting started on their next projects, keeping the passion alive. In Muncie, Rachel Russell, NewsLink, Indiana. Now students can be a part of this exhibit next year. Interested students at area school should get in contact with their art teacher to be a part of this event. Taking a look at the weather now, it's been an active week to say the <laughs> least, from snow on Sunday to severe storms on Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. And today the National Weather Service confirmed two tornadoes touched down in central Indiana on Tuesday. One was just east of Covington in west central Indiana and the other just northeast of Lafayette. Both were rated EF0 tornadoes and caused minor property damage. And closer to home, the main issue in the aftermath of those storms was severe flooding. A flood warning remains in effect for the White River in Madison County. Mm -hmm. And Sam, it's just been crazy as far as weather because you really don't know what to expect day to day. You're right, but I'm hoping Gabe has the answer. So, <laughs> Mr. Gabe Pro, what can we expect coming up in your full forecast? Yeah, you guys, we're tracking some continued rain this evening over portions of the viewing area, even a little bit of snow in northern portions of Jay County. That rain extending back off to the west. And we're going to see that continue to move in over our area, and that's going to bring about some chances for scattered showers throughout the evening. And as you guys mentioned earlier, we do have a flood warning in effect for portions along the White River in Madison County. Those flood waters we are expecting to recede over the coming days, but something to definitely keep in mind. Now, as we move through the evening, temperatures will remain in the upper to mid 30s, rain sticking around overall, and the winds will also be on the increase. So coming up in my full weather, we're talking again how long those scattered showers will last, the cool temperatures, how long are they going to stick around, and will we ever see a warm up? That's all coming up in my full forecast. Gabe, looking forward to it. A former Ball State professor accused of assaulting an underage boy will now be spending the next 18 months on probation. 81-year-old Melvin Sharp was arrested in 2015 and charged with child molestation. In February, Sharp struck a deal with prosecutors and pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of battery resulting in bodily injury. Sharp has consistently denied having any sexual contact with the minor. Sharp was formerly a journalism professor at the university until his retirement in 2007. 
Also tonight, an Eaton man was arrested after allegedly starving two pit bulls in his home. 22-year-old Brock Clark was arrested Wednesday afternoon and charged with two counts of cruelty. Police say that the home that the dogs were taken from was infested with cockroaches, fleas, and animal feces. The director of the Muncie Animal Shelter said that these two dogs were, quote, the most emaciated dogs I've ever seen. Clark has been released from the Delaware County Jail after posting bail. The good news is those two pit bulls named Diesel and Dozer are on their road to recovery and will be placed in foster homes. Well, one Yorktown woman is striving to serve up more than just food. She wants to serve up memories for the dinner table. Newslink Indiana's Michelle Kaufman shows us how one woman is making it all happen with some pretty unique foods. Food is associated with stories. Local caterer Victoria Brewer has many stories and memories in the kitchen and uses her business, Once Upon a Plate, to help others write memories in their life using food. I really wanted to offer, you know, unique menus for everyone. So we have a menu that we advertise, but we also customize menus um, that, you know, anyone can come to us and say, well, we want breakfast for dinner or we want whatever they can dream up. We can make anything is what we tell our clients. She prides herself in standing out and being creative. Some of the recipes are made up. <laughs> we've, we've done a lot of recipes that um, trial and error and then uh, wind up um, not necessarily perfecting it, but finding what makes it work um, and taste well. So, Employee Alyssa Good works several weekends a month and gets more out of the experience than just learning how to cook. I have learned so much, it's crazy. It just seeing how she works and the recipes she uses and the way she preps food, it's, it's just mind blowing. It's really cool to see all her recipes come to life. Muncy, Michelle Kaufman, Newslink, Indiana. And you can find more about Once Upon a Plate Catering by visiting their Facebook page. A Ball State professor is picking up a long-lost passion once again. The details coming up. Also, a new bus is rolling through campus. We'll tell you what it's bringing for students after the break. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Tyler, it is never too late to accomplish your dreams. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Samantha. <laughs> Newslink Indiana's Alicia Ruggs tells us how a Ball State professor continues to develop his craft. After putting his talents aside for so long, Ball State Religious Studies professor Jeffrey Brackett has found his way back into the world of art. When I stopped being an art major, I just stopped drawing. Jeffrey eventually made a portfolio and things only went up from there. I went to a conference and a friend of mine who's a professional artist was there. So I brought some of my drawings in a portfolio. 
I showed them to him and he said, have you considered having a show? I've had individual shows, really just kind of displays of my art locally. So at Savage's Ale House, currently at the Guardian Brewing Company and at the Cup. And I have some at Minatrista. Uh, it makes me feel more integrated into Muncie. I mean, if I go to a gallery or a museum, I'm looking at the art a lot differently now. One of my favorite pieces um, is uh, one from the, his series that he calls Power Lines. And right now it's hanging at Minatrista. His recent success is truly one for the books, or in this case, coloring books. I tried to do a completely different design. I literally just put a little circle on the page, and I didn't know what to do, and then I drew a line. Then I just started connecting stuff, literally connecting dots, and turned it into a design. And somebody said, oh, those are cool. You should make a coloring book, right? So I just collected a bunch and self-published it. Jeff works with ideas that come through the history of art but what he does is uh, it's unique it's powerful it's striking just get a sketchbook and get a pen or a pencil and don't even think about it. do whatever you want but just start drawing in muncie alicia ruggs newslink indiana to see more of jeffrey brackett's artwork visit jeffreymbrackett.com Going to college is about managing new responsibilities. The Women's Wellness on Wheels bus was on campus to provide students with a free health screening. Newslink Indiana's Chris Robinson tells us how Ball State and the bus are helping students out. As a student, this new responsibility of managing your health care can sometimes have a lower priority than other responsibilities. Tisha Reed, the Associate Director for the IU Center of Excellence in Women's Health, understands how it can be difficult for some students. For college campuses, a lot of times, the students there, you know, they've kind of gotten away. They, some of them don't know if they have insurance or not. They're on the parents, but they don't know. And, it, you know, it's just kind of ambiguous for them. And so we just want to make sure that they have all that they need, whether it's mental health service, reproductive health services, um, or, car, you know, cardiovascular services. The bus sees everybody that comes to them for help, not just women. Uh, we see anyone over the age of 13 in our program. Um, we are, our target audience, of course, is the women because that's um, where the National Center of Excellence in Women's Health. However, we see everyone. We don't turn anyone away. The bus is partnered with Ball State's Health Center. Elizabeth Peeler, the health educator at the Office of Alcohol and Drug Education, helps students make the healthier choices. So I say that my job is to try to make the healthier choices the easier choices because y'all are already having to do a thousand other things. Um, so it's for me, it's learning where I can um, influence your health without, without it being a big burden to you. The Ball State Health Center also offers students free HIV and STI testing on Wednesday in Muncie, Chris Robinson, Newslink, Indiana. For more information on health services available to students, visit the Health Center's webpage at bsu.edu forward slash health center. And Gabe, what can we expect to see coming up in your full forecast? Yeah, we're continuing to watch those showers move across the area to the north of Muncie, but will we ever see a warm up? I'll have the details coming up in my full weather. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Plan. 
today. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. So guys, we've all heard the saying, April showers bring May flowers, but when they say that, I don't think they're talking about snow showers at all. <laughs> I don't think they are either, and it's even hard to decide what to wear just because the weather's been so crazy, Gabe. I know. Hopefully we're going to see an end to that <laughs> up and down trend that it seems like we've seen at least this week quite a bit. So as uh, we, we uh, take a look at weather now, uh, radar again, we're continuing to track uh, those uh, snow showers continuing to move uh, across the area and uh, even becoming a little bit more widespread now into portions of Grant County as well. And again, that's all associated with kind of that cooler air that we have across the area. Again, stretching, this is a large system stretching back off into Illinois and that's going to make this kind of an overnight event that we're going to continue to see that rain be possible through the evening. So again, we do have that flood warning I mentioned earlier in effect for portions of Madison County along the White River. That's in effect till 2 p.m. tomorrow. Well, like that, again, that flooding is going to begin to recede, but overall it's again something just to keep in mind in those affected areas. 52 outside over McKinley Avenue right now. Winds out of the east northeast at six miles an hour, making it feel like 38. So a little bit chillier uh, with that wind chill factored in. So we got up to a high of 45 today. So if you thought that felt cold, you're not wrong. On average, we're sitting just around 57 today and compare that with our record high of 80 on this day. So again, cooler temperatures than average overall. And that's going to continue into tonight with 38 degrees as our low, mostly cloudy conditions. Again, scattered showers, maybe some snow north of Muncie and those winds on the increase at 10 to 15 miles an hour. Precision cast again, not maybe showing all of this rain, but again, pretty scattered in nature overall as we make our way through the night tonight and as well as uh, into the day tomorrow. Seeing a little bit of clearing tomorrow morning, but overall mostly cloudy conditions are expected. Showers in the afternoon and evening again returning with those winds again, still remaining pretty breezy overall. So precision cast also again showing cloud cover overall and mainly again that rain in the evening maybe turning even to snow for some portions of the area. Again, nothing that will cause major impacts overall, uh, but uh, it just it's April. It seems like we shouldn't be seeing snow this time of year. Again, clearing out though by midnight tomorrow night. So um, overall, we are going to also see those winds on the increase as well, gusting at times to 22 miles an hour tomorrow afternoon. So winds also remaining pretty constant overall. Uh, factoring that in also with the rain is going to make it kind of a nasty afternoon tomorrow. But on the seven day, that system tomorrow is going to bring in cooler temperatures, but clear conditions for your weekend. So that's the good news. Wintry mix again possible on Monday before we see that warm up into next week. And you guys, 54 on Wednesday, even making it up to the 60s by Thursday, and I'm, I've even seen some indications of seeing temperatures upward near 70 degrees. So oh. that's the good news. We, we, looks like we're going to get that one. I know. I really want 70 degree temperatures because this colder weather is just, mm -hmm. I don't like it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of it. All right, Gabe, thank you so much. And Kara joins us now with a look at what we can expect after the break. Yeah, guys, we're going to take a look at a future Ball State basketball player and his accomplishments. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are.
cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but things changed. Teaching didn't seem that cool anymore. So you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Amazing things are happening in teaching, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Welcome back to NewsLink Indiana. I'm Kara Biernat with Sports. Ball State hosted its annual Pro Day yesterday to give Ball State football players a chance to impress NFL scouts. NewsLink Indiana's Drew Dargavel has more. On Wednesday, April 4th, Ball State hosted their annual NFL Pro Day in both the Fisher Training Complex and the Field Turf in the Rec Center. Scouts from several NFL teams gathered to evaluate talented football players from around the area. This year's Pro Day included nine former and current Ball State players and seven other players from nearby schools. But perhaps the most notable player at the Pro Day was defensive end Anthony Wimbush, who was named to the All-Mac Defensive First Team in 2017. We caught up with him after the Combine to see how he felt about his first Ball State Pro Day. I'm excited. I know this is just a step to it, but I know it's not done yet, so I know I got a lot more to prove right now. So just keep grinding until like grab day, then after that, get ready for the teams to come, see which team I go to, then try to make the 53 man roster. There's no doubt the future seems bright for this young defensive end. Another notable player to participate in the Pro Day was former Ball State receiver Kevon Maybon. After graduation, Maybon had signed with both the Titans and the Colts last year, but never actually saw any action on the field. We caught up with him to find out if he accomplished his goals at this year's Pro Day. Um, well, I just wanted to come in and, and run a faster 40 than I did last year because that's what a lot of scouts were saying they wanted to see from me. And I, I did that on the first one. The second one, I kind of tweaked my hamstring. But, you know, I went out there, I put a good first time out for the first one. So I feel like I did good in that aspect. And then they just wanted to see me have sharper routes, and I feel like I did that too, even with the hamstring bothering me, and you know, the rest is, you know, in their hands now. Reporting from Ball State's Pro Day, for NewsLink Indiana, I'm Drew Dargavel. Winbush and the other athletes will have to wait for the NFL draft on April 26th to see where they end up. Ball State's Kyle Mallers and Sean Sellers were named to the academic All-Mac team for men's basketball. For the third year in a row, Sellers earned a spot on the team and Mallers was selected in his first year of eligibility. For the award, to qualify, the student athlete must have at least a 3.20 cumulative GPA and have participated in at least 50% of his team's contest. Mallers currently has a 3.7 GPA and started all 32 games for Ball State this season. Sellers finished his senior year with a 3.6 GPA as well as surpassing some milestones on the court. Sellers hit the 1,000-point career mark, became Ball State's all-time leading three-point shooter, and tied the school record for career games played. Ball State basketball commit and current Cathedral High School junior Jerron Coleman was named to the Indy Star Indiana All-Stars team on Wednesday. The Indiana All-Stars select the top 13 high school seniors in the state each year. This year's team will play two games against the Kentucky All-Stars, the first being June 8th at Bellarine University in Kentucky and June 9th at Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Coleman will be one of seven Indiana All-Stars on next year's Ball State roster, joining Taylor Persons and Tajay Teague. The Cardinals have signed a total of nine Indiana All-Stars in the past five years under head coach James Whitford. Coleman was also recently selected to the Indiana Basketball Coaches Association Senior All-State Supreme 15. Now guys, although the season is over, we're still honoring current, future, and former uh, Ball State 
basketball players, so it's just <laughs> like basketball never ended. <laughs> I know, right? It's very fascinating to hear all of that. Kara, thank you so much. And by the way, speaking of basketball, the NBA has teamed up with a new organization to help kids what they plan to do after the break. And fans and players at one baseball game got up close and personal with a national treasure. Those stories are next in Trending. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few who are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. Time now to take a look at what's trending. Joining us now with the latest stories is Newslink Indiana's Marley Thomas. Marley, what do you have for hey us guys. tonight? So, first of all, the NBA has teamed up with a nonprofit organization to create sensory rooms. These rooms are made for children with autism specular disorder and other disabilities. Oftentimes, children with these disabilities have trouble around large, noisy crowds. These rooms are dis are made to be able to give them a relaxing environment with low lighting, smoothing sounds, and soft colors. Wow, that's really cute. I really like what we have there. Yeah. So by the start of the upcoming NBA season, they hope to have at least 19 arenas with these rooms included, and the Utah Jazz will be opening theirs on Friday night. That's kind of a nice idea. That way, those of all abilities will be able to kind of participate yes, in the fun, too. I agree. <laughs> so, in other news, at the season opener for a Mariners baseball game, everyone was suddenly taken by surprise as a bald eagle was released to fly around the stadium during the national anthem, but it did not go as planned. After the eagle flew across the stadium, it decided to land on pitcher James Paxton's shoulder. The eagle's first attempt to latch onto his shoulder was unsuccessful, but the eagle tried again and was able to latch onto his jersey. Paxton <sighs> remained calm and stood still the entire time until the eagle's handler was able to take care of the situation. Yeah, I'm happy that he remained calm. If that was me, I'd probably be going crazy, flailing my arms a little bit. Me too. You know. He definitely handled it a lot better <laughs> than I would have. Yeah, and you know what else? I think at that point I'm less worried about him and more concerned about the bird. That thing yeah. was struggling out there. I know, I know. Very funny. <laughs> well, thank you, Marley. All right, and how about one final check that weather with Gabe Pro? Yeah, you guys, rain continues into tomorrow afternoon, unfortunately, along with those cool temperatures, although we clear out for the weekend, before more wintry precipitation arrives on Monday, although after that we'll begin a gradual warming trend with temperatures near 60 towards the end of next week. All right, thank you, Gabe, so much. That's all tonight for Newslink Indiana. Be sure to watch our midday update tomorrow at noon, streaming live on the Newslink Indiana Facebook page. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Have a great night.